On the weekends, you wouldn't recognize me. On the weekends, when I step out of the house, I'm not usually wearing this. When I leave the house on the weekends, I'm usually wearing a five-year-old pair of ratty old Birkenstocks. Now, these Birkenstocks have been with me everywhere, rafting in Harper's Ferry, walking the streets of Dublin, and my parents' garbanzo bean farm in Idaho. Now, when I wear my Birkenstocks, it sends a message to the world and to myself that I want to be comfortable and that I'm ready for some activities. But when I'm back on the metro on Monday morning, my shoes tell a different story. Because in the wise words of Forrest Gump's mama, you can tell a lot about a person by their shoes. <laughs> so I want to send a message to my coworkers and to my boss that I'm polished, professional, and ready to get the job done. So, but I'm still sensible, because you will see no stilettos under my desk. It's back to my chunky two-inch heels and my ballet flats. But the reason I don't wear my Birkenstocks to work is because we all communicate visually, whether we're actively aware of it or not. And those visual cues and that visual communication, it matters for our work products too. So I was really happy to see this morning that IG Missile and Acting IG Stevenson both talked about the importance of communication when they were talking about um, changing the culture of their agency. Because communication is critical to the mission of IGs. When we're talking about um, internally, it's important to communicate with our own internal um, staff, but also with our agencies. It's important that our agency heads and leadership take our recommendations seriously and implement the changes that we recommend in a timely manner. And we all have external stakeholders that can benefit from clear, effective communication as well. So those are people like appropriators, policymakers, and the press and the public, for example. So I know we all just got back from lunch, so I think we're going to start off with a little activity so we can get everybody kind of back into the day. So um, the, the topic of my talk today is visual communication. So instead of standing up here and just talking about visual communication, we're going to do an activity. Now I know as an audience participant myself, I usually hate to have to do audience participation. <laughs> but I'm up here now and I get to make the rules, so this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to put the next slide up on the screen. And as soon as you process the information, I want you to start a slow clap. All right, everybody ready? Here we go. I'll wait. <laughs> Take your time. Is that everybody? Are we still waiting? Okay, now everybody clapping if you've not processed it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, same thing for the next slide. So, as soon as you've processed the information, I want you to start a slow clap. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> So it turns out we can get a sense of a visual scene in about one-tenth of one second. And this, uh, the information on both slides isn't exactly the same, but you can get a general sense of what we're talking about. And then you can refer to the text for more information. So just by the picture, you get big plane in a hangar, looks expensive, and looks like it's being worked on. And then if that piques your interest, you can refer to the text for more information. All right. So I hope that that... Uh, uh, helps you understand why images can be a powerful tool. And when we're talking about publishing our reports as text documents on the internet, it's important that uh, we understand what our readers are actually, uh, how our readers are interacting with our work. So this slide represents, there's a hundred dots here, just take my word for it for all of you auditors in the room. There's a hundred <laughs> dots. And that represents um, like 100% of the words on a page, okay? And internet users actually don't read 100% of words on a page. They actually read about 28%. So when we're publishing most of our reports as PDF documents or as text documents on the web, it's important to keep this number in mind. And I want to make one additional point. I'm going to go back to the slide that I just showed you. And be honest, how many of you read 100% of these words? And how many of you read about 28%? OK, if you're an attorney, you probably read 100% of them. But everybody else, I don't know. <laughs> So, oops, well, that just gave it away. But um, so photos can add uh, an element to your reports, but there's other visuals that we can add as well. So charts, graphs, and infographics are another great tool. So 
those types of those types of visuals were found to be 98% in 98 beneficial in 98% of cases and they improved information synthesis or how much someone comprehended the information and connected it by 36%. And that number is actually huge and I want to stay here for just a second. Because what if you could get your, the head of your agency that you oversee, or just your boss or your immediate supervisor, to understand the importance of your findings by nearly 40% better just by adding a graphic. That's actually huge. And what I'm saying here is not that the words that we write aren't important. I'm actually saying the exact opposite. The words we're writing are so important that we need to find ways to get people to engage and to read more. And graphics and, info and photos and visuals are just another way to accomplish that. So I want to move beyond the four corners of our reports, because that's not the only ways that we can communicate. So social media is a great tool that we can use. Um, and about 69% of adults use social media, and most use social media on a daily basis. So Siggy uh, launched its first Twitter account last year, uh, one year ago, last October, uh, Oversight.gov. And so when you upload a report to Oversight.gov, the website, a tweet is automatically generated with your agency's name, the title of your report, and a link to read your report. And over the last year, over 16,000 people have followed that account. And maybe that's 16,000 people that engage with us in other ways, but at a minimum, that's thousands of people who otherwise might not be engaging with our work on a daily basis. Um, so, and I want to go back to my earlier point about photos. Um, Social media posts that include photos or graphics perform about two times better than social media posts without them. So it's a, we can combine a lot of these tools to work together. All right, so video, so, uh, video can also be another powerful tool. And I hate to break it to all of you MySpace users out there that it's actually not a very popular form of social media. But YouTube is actually the second most popular form of social media. Because video can convey a sense of emotion that um, Photos and infographics just can't. I bet if I asked you all to think right now of an emotionally powerful TV commercial, you could all think of at least one. And I bet half of you maybe are thinking of that like really sad APSCA uh, commercial with the Sarah McLachlan song. I was thinking about using that song as my walk up, but I thought it would like <laughs> kind of kill the mood in the room. <laughs> so video can be a great tool. So we can explain the findings of our reports. We can um, explain what we do. And we can talk about our history. So one of the projects that I recently worked on for Siggy was a 10-minute documentary style video about the history of IGs for the last 40 years. And in the last four months since that video has been posted, along with um, individual interviews with IGs and members of Congress, those videos have been viewed over 11,000 minutes. And that's about 183 hours. So again, back to my earlier point about social media, Maybe those, aren't pe those are people who engage with us in other ways, but that's maybe thousands of minutes that people otherwise weren't engaging with our work. So the co I hope you noticed the color scheme of my slide here, this like dusty pink color. It's not a very government color. Um, but this is actually called millennial pink, and I chose this for a specific reason. Because I think sometimes this social media and video stuff gets relegated to things that millennials want, which is true, I can attest. But it goes beyond that. Um, a recent study found that about half of senior executives shared video content with their coworkers on a weekly basis. And among senior executives, three out of five said that they would prefer to watch a video if, if text and video on the same topic were offered on the same page. So it's probably true that some of those senior executives are millennials, because some of us are in their, our late 30s now. But not all of them are, are millennials. And so Video can be a, a powerful tool that um, people of all generations are engaging with and finding useful for their work. So I want to uh, tell you a story about a, a beloved American breakfast chain. And this story might be familiar to some of you who spend as much, Twitter, spend as much time on Twitter as I do. But I imagine that some of you don't spend like half of your waking hours on Twitter like me. So, um, this is a story about a rebrand that a, an American breakfast chain went through. And a rebrand oftentimes is like a refresh of a look and feel of a logo. Maybe the color scheme changes. You saw this in the 90s when Apple, they changed from that like rainbow colored Apple to like the sleek monochrome Apple that you see today. But um, IHOP recently went through a major rebrand. And they changed their name. They announced on Twitter, they changed their name from IHOP 
to I hob. They flipped the P to a B and then completely changed their brand. So let me just throw this out there. Who wants to guess what this B stands for? Oh, come on, you guys, you all knew? <laughs> I should have prefaced that by saying, if you already know, you can't already, you can't guess. Oh man, all right, well. <laughs> so at the time, earlier this year, IHOP did not announce what the B stood for. And people were confused. There was an uproar online. People were upset. They didn't know what to expect. Because what had always been the International House of Pancakes was now something completely unknown to the folks at the time. All of you are very smart. Now you know that it's burgers. <laughs> so a, a couple weeks go by, and IHOP announces that the B stood for burgers. Um, and what followed by that was, a ro if you know anything about fast food social media presence, it was a roasting by Wendy's, who <laughs> tweeted, oh no, it's not, it's not there. Oh, uh, who tweeted, not really afraid of the burgers from a place that decided pancakes were too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually IHOP announces that this is just a gimmick. It's still IHOP, um, but they were just trying to drum up attention for their, their, their chains and also for the new burgers that they did add to their menu. But the amazing thing to me about this entire gimmick was that the whole time people were talking about IHOP, Everyone knew we were talking about IHOP. And part of the reason was because all they did was change the P to a B, it's just one letter. But the other reason is because every element of their visual brand stayed the same. Right. That bright blue, the shock of red, and those big bubble letters, it's the kind of logo that you can recognize from five miles down the freeway when you have a hankering for some pancakes, or for some burgers now. Oh, and it's also the kind of logo you can recognize when you're scrolling quickly past on social media. So, we're actually processing about five times as much, we're receiving as about five times as much information as we were 30 years ago. So it's critical that we use all the tools at our disposal to grab and retain the attention of our stakeholders. So let's just do a thought experiment. If tomorrow, Congress decided to act like the board of directors at IHOP and decided it was a time for an OIG rebrand. So now we're the OIB or something. <laughs> I don't know what the B would stand for. Do we have visual cues and visual elements to our brand that would still communicate who we are to our stakeholders? If an infographic or your, your report cover was dropped on your agency head's desk, would she still recognize, immediately recognize that it was from your office? Because those critical seconds matter when folks are deciding to engage with our work or to skip on by it for something else. So just as I make a smart shoe choice when I go to work in the morning, we should be making smart visual choices with our work and we should strive to have the same kind of brand recognition that IHOP has. Our brand, the visual elements that we have, and the mediums we use can all work together to communicate that we conduct our work uh, with integrity and that we're thorough, authoritative, and have meaningful results. So I'll leave you with one final question. How are we communicating beyond words? Thank you. <laughs>